You've just got a drone, you're excited to get racing, you've just gone to buy some batteries and you've realized, gee, there's a lot I need to learn. Well, stay tuned because I'm going to be teaching you guys, giving you the skills to make sure you pick the right FPV drone racing battery for your racing drone. All right. G'day, Stu here from UAV Futures and today, well, this one, a bit of a beginner's guide or something that I think is going to help a lot of newcomers to our hobby. So many people get into FPV drone racing and then I get so many emails that saying, Stuart, uh, I'm kind of confused. I've got my drone ready to rock and roll, but there is so many different numbers when it comes to choosing batteries. What's the right battery for me? What one should I get? And today, well, I'm going to be teaching you guys, going through all the specs, all the numbers, giving you guys the skills. Look, there will be some battery recommendations in the description down below. But I'm going to be giving you guys the skills where you can take this information, go out, search around, and find the right battery for you. So, what we're going to do, we're going to jump straight in, stick it on the bench. We're going to have a look at things like cell count, C ratings, battery sizes, and find out what is the right FPV drone racing battery. All right, let's get started. Okie dokie, so you can see I've got a bunch of batteries on the bench, all different shapes, sizes, colors, weights, all that sort of jazz with a whole bunch of name, numbers labeled all over them, but it's very, very simple. There's just three things that we're going to be looking at in this video to help you guys make the right decision. So the first one, we're going to be looking at the cell count, and uh, that's also how much voltage the battery actually has, so whether it be a two, three, or four or five cell battery. Then we're gonna be looking at the size, so you can see these are all different sizes and, and weights, but what I mean by that, by their amp hours or milliamp hours. And then finally, we're gonna be looking at the C rating, which stands for the discharge rating, not to be confused with the cell count. I know that sounds very, very silly. Anyway, let's jump in. We're gonna look at the cell count, which is uh, the same thing as talking about the voltage. Now, speaking of the cell rating, uh, I know it can be a little bit confusing because we call them 5S, 4S, 3S, and 2S, but uh, you're talking about cells, why aren't they called 5C, 4C, 3C, 2C, and that's because the C rating, we use the term C for a different, for the discharge rating. So that's why when you hear batteries talked about in terms of 5S, 4S, 3S, or 2S, we're talking about how many cells are actually contained in a battery. So this one right here, you can see it's got five, in, well, you can't really see, it's got five individual cells. I've got another 4S battery here, which will show it off a little bit better. This is a 4S battery, and you can see you've got one, two, three, four cells in there. So that's what makes up this 4S lipo and we've got a 3s and a 2s now the voltages for all these if you're shopping around some extra terms to type in your search engine 18.5 volts is going to be 5s 14.8 volts is 4s 3s is uh what's 3s it's been a while 11.1 and then 2s is 7.4 now it's a bit of an overview you know what would you use these batteries for these the 5s look i've only got a few of these and these are not really for most fpv races very very uncommon a few crazy flat out high speed runs you might put some of these on here but this is not really one of choice for most of our equipment as well and the equipment you've got you've got to make sure that it can take the actual volts that these things are pumping out so we're going to put that to the side next we've got the 4s now this is our bread and butter of racing this is what most fpv quadcopters run on everybody i know go everybody i know flies a 4s battery so this is probably the one that you're going to be shopping for for your fpv racing drone down here we've got a 3s and this used to be very common with the hobby again stepping down the voltage which means you're going to be getting a guess some of the lower rpms in your motors now this one right here i use this to sort of power my goggles all that sort of stuff 3s is not really common on the bigger bigger five inch racing drones but there are some of the little micros things like this that rock around on a 3s occasionally this one also does a 4s but some of those smaller drones are still flying with the uh with those and then right here this is where we've got a 2s so uh this honestly this is used for some of those really really tiny little indoor micro drones 2s really doesn't have any place on some of the bigger ones it's only really on the small indoor sort of ones. As a side note though, our goggles and also our radios are very happy to be run on a 2S battery. Obviously check your manufacturer's specs and all that sort of stuff, but I know the goggles, my Omways and my Tyrannus, they are both happy to run off the voltage of this thing. Alrighty, now the next thing we're going to look at, you can see, because I've zoomed out a little bit because these numbers are a little bit bigger. I know it can be a bit hard to see the cell rating right here because look, that 14 volts is a little bit hard to see, but we've zoomed out and now you can see some other big numbers. So this one says 1.5, 1.3, 
1,300, 2.2. There are a lot of strain, you know, very, very different numbers. And what we're talking about, this is their milliamp hours, or this is their size or amp hours. This is how much the actual capacity of the battery holds. So how much juice is in there? How long can you run it for? Now, typically for our racing drones, I fly anywhere between 1,300 milliamp hours and 1,500 milliamp hours. You can see here, this company just breaks it down to say 1.5 amp hours or 1.3 amp hours. This 1.3 amp hours is the same as 1,300 milliamp hours. So you're either gonna be looking for 1.3s or 1,300s. It doesn't matter which way, whether you're saying amp hours or milliamp hours. There's just 1,000 milliamp hours in one amp hour. Now for me, look, most of the time when we're talking about racing drones, what I'm happy with is a 1.5 or a 1,500 milliamp hour as the top end and 1,300 or 1 1.3 amp hours on the bottom end. So overall, something along these sides. I'm gonna take this one out because look, that's a 5S. So if you're looking for the size of a battery, I would say get a 4S battery that's between 1.3 or 1,300 to 1.5 or 1,500. That's in terms of the size that's gonna fit on your actual FPV racing drone. And then finally, we're gonna talk about the C rating. And this is perhaps the most, I guess, one that people debate over the most and what it stands for. That's our discharge rating how much juice these things can pump out in a short amount of time. So if you've got a really hungry quad, you hit that throttle, how much juice can it suck out? Because otherwise, you can get some battery sag. And trust me, that means you're not gonna have the, it's not gonna be pumping out enough juice. Your motors are still gonna be hungry. They're still gonna be wanting. So you want a really as high discharge rate as possible. But there's actually some contention over this because uh, it's a bit of marketing hype and no one really, you know, it's very difficult to compare C ratings. It's not really apples and apples. It's more like apples and oranges. So you can see this one right here, we're gonna get this out of the way. It says high discharge LiPo battery. This is probably the worst discharge battery in all of these. So its C rating is only 20 to 30. And you can see we've got two numbers there. 20 is its standard constant, or it can do a 10 second burst of, uh, of, 30, of 30 C. So really, that's not a very good battery at all. What we should be looking at is something with a much, much higher C rating. So you can see this one here, that's 90 C. This one right here, that's a 65, this one's a 65C battery, 75C battery, and this one, crazy enough, it says 110C, 220C, and uh, I'm gonna say, take this with a grain of salt. You need to do some research, because these C ratings, this one for sure, look how much I've flown this. You can see this thing has been flown to death. This battery for sure is definitely nowhere near 110C, so that's a bit, a bit of marketing rubbish. This one right here, this one's only a base of 65C, but it's a very, very well performing batteries. This one performs far better than this one. Even though this one's C rating, it's almost rated for double, double that. Now my advice for going for the C rating, get as high as you can. For drone racing, you at least need, you know, 50 plus, 60 plus if you can afford it. You know, and some of them really go up to become quite expensive. You know, the higher up you go in C rating, it really means you've got a lower internal resistance in your battery. So it's a better quality cell in there, means it can pump out more juice. So the C rating is gonna be higher, but they're more expensive, so you know, you gotta you gotta weigh that up. But my recommendation, don't buy some of these batteries that just because they say high C, check to make sure because it says 20 to 30. This one on one of my drones would be absolutely rubbish. Now, once you've got your head around all those numbers, just to throw a bit of a spinner in the works, make things a little bit more confusing, there's actually some different type of LiPos out there. So you can see these ones here, these three, they're graphene batteries. This is just a standard LiPo, and look, graphene might be a bit of marketing hype. There's still some debate on that. Either way, as long as you're choosing a good battery, it shouldn't matter too much if it's a graphene or not. And then the only other part really, I'd say there's also a high voltage one as well, but in my experience, I haven't had very much success with high voltage LiPos, so I'd say stay away from those. We'll just get your normal standard, whether it be graphene or standard LiPos. Alrighty, so there it is. There's my battery beginner's guide or tips video on how to pick the right FPV drone racing battery for you guys. And look, it might sound confusing to start with, but once you understand, there's look not really too much to look at, a few simple numbers, and you can make the right decision to pick the right battery for your drone. Now, a massive shout out to my Patreon supporters because look, this video was actually sort of based on one of their ideas, on one of their emails. I got an email from one of my Patreon supporters and it said, Stuart, can you please explain how batteries work? And I thought, well, 
Patreon does so much for me. It helps me make all this content on the channel. I can do better than write you an email. I can actually make a video that other people can also benefit of. So, hope you enjoyed that out there if you're a Patreon supporter and hopefully if you're just a regular subscriber, you got something out of it as well because getting the right battery, I know it can be confusing, but honestly, it's not too hard once you follow those few little steps and look at some of those numbers. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. Subscribe for more FPV related content. I'll drop some batteries down in the description down below somewhere. There'll be a link to some if you just want some specifics, but I'd say with these skills, have a bit of a shop around because now you know how to pick the right battery for you. Anyway, happy flying! Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying!